Hello, the purpose of this video is to um, look at net ionic equations. This is a commonly um, acquired skill in an introductory or general chemistry class. So I want to put my my two cents forward so that my students know my, my take on this topic. Okay, so let's take an equation. Let's say what this video is not. This video is not learning how to balance equations per se. We'll assume that you can balance equations already, but we'll see the benefits and the pitfalls of writing net ionic equations. All right, so I haven't said what it's not. Let's actually see what it is. So let's pick an equation. Um, and um, I'm going to write, and it's not about nomenclature either. So NaCl aqueous and PbNO3 twice aqueous to give PbCl2 solid and NaNO3 aqueous. All right, so you know that aqueous means dissolved in water. Solid means it's a solid. So we have a precipitate. Um, <clears throat> this is not a balanced equation yet, so I'm going to balance it real quick. And again, I'm not going to show you how to balance. I'm just going to balance it because um, we'll need a balanced equation when we move forward. Okay, so look in. I'm just going to mutter to myself real quick. There's probably a two there, which means I'm probably going to to the um, and I think that's balanced now so two sodium sorry I'm muttering under my breath because I didn't balance it uh, in preparation to make the video so two sodium okay I think just eyeballing it that looks balanced okay this is what we call a molecular equation So we would call this a molecular a molecular equation, just a regular balanced equation. Now we're going to write an ionic equation and only after that do we write the net ionic equation, NIE. All right. So let's write the ionic equation, and that's why to do so it's important to notice that I need to know the solubility. So you would have awareness of solubility maybe in a chart, maybe you just know some basic rules anyway. And anything that's aqueous we split up into separate ions, and anything that's not aqueous we don't. <clears throat> so I have two sodium cations, so two sodium cations and I have two chloride anions, right? So I separate the free ions. I've got a lead two ion by the looks of it. And then I have two nitrate ions. Okay, so separate into free ions all of the aqueous species. I can't split up a solid, that's why we build structures out of them. Wouldn't be very good building materials if we could separate them. So just rewrite the precipitate as is. The precipitate here <coughs> could be a solid liquid or um, <coughs> a gas. So again, only aqueous things can be separated. So I'm gonna write it down here. I've got two Na plus <coughs> aqueous and to NO3 minus aqueous. Okay, so everything I could separate, I did. Anything I could not separate, I did not. And essentially, you can't separate your precipitate, which I'll abbreviate PPT here. Okay, so the net ionic equation, <clears throat> we take the ionic equation and we cancel spectator ions. So a spectator ion is anything that appears both as a reactant and a product that's the same. 
Um, so essentially, the best way to do this is to look at your precipitate, which in this case is here. And why was that black? That should be red. And split it and basically um, look at only that material. That will give you a quickest way to get to the net ionic equation. So we've got lead 2 plus and 2 Cl minus. To give lead Cl2. That's our net ionic equation. Everything else cancels, right? Everything else is the same. On either side, we have two sodiums on both sides. We have two nitrates on both sides. So clearly, we have canceled what we call spectator ions. Okay, so that's how you do it. <clears throat> what are the pros and cons for doing it? Well, let's compare the net ionic equation with the molecular equation. So let's compare the net ionic equation with the molecular equation. So we are going to compare <clears throat> the molecular equation with the net ionic equation. So the molecular, I'll just rewrite it again. The molecular was NaCl. And PPNO3 twice. Then we had PBCl2 and NaNO3. So let me remind myself where those coefficients were. It was 2, 1, 1, 2. Okay. So it was. 2, 1, 1, 2. Okay. The net ionic equation we can see was Pb2 plus and 2Cl minus. And that gave us PbCl2. Okay, so comparing these, what you notice? Well, first of all, you notice that the molecular equation would have you believe there are two products. <clears throat> when, if you look at the net ionic equation, there's only one product. So we learn from the net ionic equation that there is only one product and that is PBCL2 solid. Okay, this is not a product. It's written on the product side of the equation but we could see that it, it's just a bunch of spectator ions. It's nothing. They all cancel. The sodium cancel. The nitrate cancel. That's not a product. There's no net change between the reactant side and the product side. So that's one of the advantages of writing net ionic equations. It allows a chemist to focus in on what's really happening in an equation. Um, let's look at one more example. Um, so let's have a look at one more example. Let's say we had 
um, I don't know, Na NO3 plus KCl to give NaCl plus KNO3. So we know that this is the molecular equation. Let's write the ionic equation. And then finally the net ionic equation. So um, let's separate everything into its free ions. So Na plus and NO3 minus and K plus and Cl minus. Okay, that's the reactant side. And then remember I'm splitting up all aqueous species. Okay, so everything that's aqueous is being split up. <clears throat> so when I write the net, I'm looking for a precipitate on the right, and I don't see one. In fact, everything is a spectator. Sodiums are present on both sides. Nitrate is present on both sides. Potassium, both sides. Chloride, both sides. So I've just learned that there is no reaction. So again, if I compare the net ionic equation with the molecular equation, I see that right in the molecular equation alone, the molecular equation could be misinterpreted Miss in, oh, I think there are probably two ends, misinterpreted as providing products in fact the net ionic equation shows that, let's make some space, the net ionic equation shows that there are no products. There are zero products. So this is not a chemical reaction, this is just a mixture of stuff that has no interest in itself or anyone else. So hopefully in this short video I've shown you how to go about writing net ionic equations. It's the third step of a three-step process. You balance a molecular equation, you split up ions, anything that's aqueous you separate into its free ions, you don't separate the solid, a liquid, or a gas. And then the net ionic equation, you look at your solid, liquid, or a gas, and you look at what made that material and you make sure that that's all that survives. Everything else should cancel as a spectator. It will tell you if you have a true product or not. Um, and it will tell you whether you just have something written on a piece of paper or if it's something that would actually occur in a beaker in the lab or not. And that will wrap this video up.